Good morning, St. Paul's. Good morning to those here. Good morning to those who are joining us online. Um, I am Deborah Lafferette, and my colleague, Carolyn Smith, is not with us this morning, and she usually does the welcome. She's gotten very good at it, but you'll have to settle for me this morning. So welcome. Um, I acknowledge the territory in which we worship. If you saw a map of Halton, you would see the many treaties um, that are a part of the Halton region. The church is actually on the land of the Treaty 14, which is also called Head of the Lake Purchase. And one of these days we'll take a look at that map and we can look at uh, what that looks like and the many treaties that happened since the late 1700s and into the 1800s. But we also acknowledge, so we acknowledge our partnership with the Mississaugas of the Credit People, and we acknowledge all of those peoples who used to be on this land, the Haudenosaunee, the Adewanderan, and the Anishinaabe peoples. We are an affirming congregation, which means we are hopefully welcoming and we celebrate all people, all people of color, all people of all faiths, all different gender identities and sexual orientations. Um, we celebrate people for who they are and not who we want them to be. I light this candle, our Christ candle, our beautiful rainbow candle, to celebrate God's light in each one of us. Now this morning is the fourth Sunday of Lent. We are getting closer and closer to Good Friday and Easter. Today we were supposed to have a guest speaker. He was supposed to send a video this morning or a video this weekend, and unfortunately he was ill. So I do not have that video. So you're just gonna have to settle for me again. <laughs> so our prayers are with Robert, though. Uh, healing prayers, because well, he was even thinking about canceling his own service in Brantford. So our prayers are with him and his congregation as he gets better. I invite you now to join me in our opening prayer. Creator and sustainer of all that is, we offer thanks for what you have given us, the healing, the helping, the coming together of your people in this time of change and challenge. Loving God, remind us through spirit, we are never alone. You are ever near. You are with us in every breath, every heartbeat every moment of the outstretched arms of your children. Holy Presence, hear our prayer for our families, our communities, vulnerable and oppressed people around the world, that your healing energy be at work today and every day. Let us be comforted in knowing that God is with us. We are not alone. Amen. My name is Bert Fonseca, and our first reading is from the Gospel of Luke, a well-loved story from chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, and 11 to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them? So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. And a few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, 
Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like no one. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far away, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandal on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. And now the eldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you. I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when, his son of, when this son of yours comes back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you kill the fatted calf for him. And then the father said to him, Son, you have always, you are always with me. All mine, all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. A second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. From now on, therefore, we, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through, through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God, we reckon... That is, from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May God grant us understanding of this sacred text. Amen. Another beautiful choral piece by our adult choir. Thank you, Catherine. Let us pray. May the words from my lips and the meditations of my heart be guided by the Spirit and be words of wisdom for this day. Amen. The prodigal son it's one of those stories from our Bible that is well known in popular culture. For some reason, this story strikes a chord with a lot of people. A story of a son who squanders away his inheritance, falls on hard times, humbly returns home, and is embraced and celebrated by his father. 
we find so many resonant themes in this passage. Grace, forgiveness, humility, love. And why does Jesus tell this story? We get two sentences that help set the context. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. What drew the tax collectors and sinners to Jesus? What caused them to come near and listen? And what about the Pharisees and scribes? Why did this upset them? Why did they grumble that Jesus welcomed sinners and ate with them? What did it really matter to them? The story Jesus shared portray, portrays both kinds of people. The younger son who squandered the money is the tax collectors and sinners. And then we have the older son who represents the Pharisees and scribes. They each have a part in the story. You feel for both of them. You can relate to both of them. The father loves them both wholeheartedly, but it's the younger son who gets the party, who gets the physical outward expression of joy and love from his father, while the older son working in the fields is not even invited. He's forgotten. Many leave out the story of the older son and choose to focus only on the younger son and his return to his father. The story usually ends with the father's words, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Wonderful words to be sure, but it's not the end of the story. In reality, some of us might be able to relate to the younger son who lived recklessly, used up all his resources, returned home empty-handed and ashamed, seeking forgiveness for sinful living. But I think many of us can relate better to the older son, the one who tried so hard to please, the one who lived responsibly, the one who tried to live life according to the rules, the one who thinks he's entitled to fairness and equality because he is deserving. And when, when he isn't treated that way, feels slighted, angry, and lashes out at those who he feels are not deserving. How many of us have felt this way? Especially when it comes to giving more than a fair share to those who have not worked as hard as us. I hear this from my family who live in the States who say, why should my taxes pay for the health care of gang members shooting themselves in the streets? I hear it in Canada. Why should we forgive university debt? I had to pay mine. Or why should everyone get a living wage and that just means prices will increase and I've had to work hard to make my own salary? I've heard it in church. God loves everyone equally. Why should some get more than others? Why do some get more attention? What about me? We hear it everywhere we go. Of course we want fairness. Of course we want to be recognized for our work and our achievements. Of course we want people to get what they deserve, whether that means people are rewarded or punished. This is the way the world should work. But it doesn't. Unfortunately, many people come from broken homes. They, ex they have experienced trauma. Some experience oppression, discrimination, and even hate crimes against them. Some are born with lots of privilege, a warm home, financial comfort, a loving family, and freedom to grow and learn and to be themselves. But some are born with disadvantages and have to work hard to get ahead and don't always succeed. Sometimes the obstacles in life 
actually hold them down and cause them harm. Life is unfair, and some people need more than others. Jesus hung out to the tax collectors and sinners because that's where he was needed. The father in the story celebrated the return of his son, not only because he rejoiced in that return, but because it was what his son needed. And don't get me wrong, we all need it. We all need grace and forgiveness, compassion and love, and lots of it. But there are those who just need more of it. It's the world in which we live. It's an unjust world. It's an imperfect world. It's a world full of people who make mistakes. Jesus knew this. Jesus knew that some people needed more. And as disciples of Jesus, we learn that this is our call too. Our call is to support those in need. Eat and drink with those with whom others won't eat and drink. Feed those who are hungry. Forgive those who need forgiveness. House the homeless. Free the imprisoned. Celebrate those who need to be celebrated. Love those who need our love. Grace does not only come from God. Jesus is not the only one who can offer grace. We can offer grace too, especially to those who we might think are less deserving or who have not earned it. Because that's what grace is all about. It's not given to those who deserve it, but to those who need it. This work is not easy. It means laying aside judgment. It means humbling ourselves and setting aside our own sense of what's right and wrong, fair and just. It means being aware of our own biases and preconceived notions around what is deserved and what is worthy. It's hard work and it takes lots of practice. I sometimes wonder where Jesus learned it, whether he was born with it, or in all of those years before his recorded story in the Gospels, if he either had the experience of the younger son or the older son. Which experience would have brought him this great gift of compassion and love to those in need? With practice, it could have been either one, which means for us, it can be either one. Whether we have the experience of greatly sinning against ourselves or others, or whether we have the experience of judging others and deeming them unworthy, we can learn how to become like the Father in the story. We can learn to celebrate and rejoice those who are lost then found, those who are dead and are alive again. And we can do this because we know that we are loved and celebrated and welcomed into the arms of our Father, Mother, God. As a people of faith, we know that this, is, that, this, that this expansive and unconditional love is ours, that grace and forgiveness are ours whenever we ask. As a people of faith, we know this. So our job is to share that love, that grace, that forgiveness with those who don't know it with those who don't know they are loved unconditionally, with those who don't know that forgiveness and grace are possible for them, who don't know that God's love is deep and wide and that we all have that love within us to share with others. May the prodigal sons among us find the forgiveness and grace we need to feel loved and celebrated. And may the older sons among us find the forgiveness and grace to offer to others, knowing we are loved and celebrated. Go out into this world knowing God loves you, knowing we love you, knowing you are loved and celebrated, and may that love that fills you 
be shared generously with others. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we're going to sing a favorite hymn, Amazing Grace, 266 in your voices united. St. Paul's. I am uh, Jeff Laferette, <laughs> and I am the alone half of uh, Deborah. Um, so I, I have to say, Jay and I have done announcements together for over 104 times, right? This is the first time I've ever done announcements without him. So, and I have to say, honestly, I could do this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm kidding. I, I miss him dearly. But he, so I, I do have a couple announcements. But I just want to acknowledge something. So two things. Whenever I hear the prodigal son story, um, I'm often reminded by my mother if I've taken longer than two weeks to call her. She'll say, oh, he was lost and now he's found. I'm like, thanks, Mom. Um, but number two, you hear the story of grace and so on. When you talk about how someone can be filled with grace, I just want to acknowledge that imagine hearing just before your service that the person who's supposed to speak can't speak and it's less than 24 hours and you don't get upset and you don't react. Matter of fact, you feel very much like, oh, I hope they're okay. And then while we're in the car, start running your sermon. And then here we are today. So she hates that I'm bringing this up, but I just want to acknowledge that um, that's pretty good for like less than 24 hours. Not that we're reading sermons, but that's pretty good. I am in so much trouble. 
Um, but I just want to acknowledge that we, we don't always get like the human side of this, right? Like, you come here, you do the show, you, you do it. And I, I just want to recognize that, that that was pretty awesome and a pretty wicked one. So with that, um, in terms of announcements, it's more of an ask uh, this week. So Deborah's going to mention uh, the announcements around uh, Holy Week and so on and, and everything. But I want to ask uh, for a couple things. You'll hear that as church opens and as more people are coming back and, and so on, we do have an ask for ushers and greeters. And we, so we do need, it is wonderful that the perennial ushers and greeters are here, but we need some more uh, people. So if we can get people who would be willing to do ushers and greeters and sound and tech, um, we do have a, a pretty boss crew back there right now, but uh, uh, you almost had to settle for me. So I'm just saying, if we had a pretty re regular crew, that'd be really great. The second thing... See, she's awesome. Uh, there's a uh, paper back there if you want to sign up for ushering and, and so on. So uh, please do that. Secondly, um, we have a prayer shell ministry here. I don't think people understand that, but um, we do. And so we are looking for people who would uh, always be willing to knit. So if you want to knit and make prayer shawls, people will help you do that, teach you how to do it, and, and so on. But we're also looking for yarn. We're also looking for things, uh, maybe needles and yarn. So if we could, if you're interested, uh, please reach out to Carolyn McNaught. McNaught, okay? And uh, it's funny, my mom had been doing prayer shawls ever since I was born. And my dad used to say my mom was very smart. He used to call her a nitwit. And, and I thought that was a compliment, but apparently it's not. So uh, um, that said, thank you for the laugh. I was starting to sweat. Um, that said, uh, there are many types of ministry here. If you feel called for any, please uh, reach out. Karen McNaught, uh, Deborah, and, and Carolyn, and so on. So I'm not going to end with me. I'm feeling kind of lonely, so I'm going to call my friend up here to help me finish off the announcements. You know what, because I'm going to call her Carolyn. I do it all the time. All right, I am not Carolyn, even though Jeff often will call me Carolyn and call Carolyn Catherine. Um, wow, you know what, it's funny. I'm going to say my announcement, but there was one sentence in your, in your sermon that I found so profound, and it was the grace isn't for those who deserve it, it's for those who need it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a fantastic sentence to take home today. Um, so talking about grace and, and for those who are really in need, um, Ella's hockey team has decided to pair with Kerr Street Ministries in their Adopt a Shelf program. So they have a program where if you have an organization or a team, um, you can adopt one shelf and they'll tell you what, they, what they're in need of, one item that they're kind of in need of, and you can stock that shelf full of that item. So what we're um, collecting is canned fruit and fruit cups. So what they're most in need of is things like canned pineapple, peaches, fruit cocktail, um, and little fruit cups um, for the community. So um, Jeff is is like meandering. Did you bring fruit today? Oh, he brought fruit. Nice. <laughs> so it was, I know that it was, um, it, it's been up on my Facebook page. And so some people might have brought some for church today. If you didn't, and you do want to donate, Elle and I are going to be in the parking lot after church for about an hour. But you can also drop it off at my house anytime this week before Thursday. Um, what you can do is just send me an email if you need my address at Catherine at St. Paul's Oakville.com and I can send you my address or you can pop me a message um, and let me know when you might want to drop it off. So hopefully we can stock that shelf nice and full for all those people in need. And when the uh, restraining order lifts, I can maybe come to your house again too and... Or maybe we just, I don't know, it, is, there, <laughs> is it ever going to lift yeah, though? This is the thing. <laughs> So I, just, I, I thought today would be the perfect way to end this. So thank you, Catherine. I appreciate that. And the best way to end this, Catherine, a long time ago, said Jay and I needed a special way to sign off, and Jay hated it. So with Jay not being here, I think you and I need to sign off with our jazz hands. All right. Goodbye, St. Paul's.
So yeah, I just wanted to bring you up to date on what's happening um, soon for Holy Week. As I said, today's the fourth Sunday of Lent. So that means in two Sundays, it's Palm Sunday. And um, the Sunday school might actually be returning to give us a palm parade. We're, we'll cross our fingers and hope that that can happen. And then the week after that, um, I'm trying to get my dates right. I think April 10th is Palm Sunday. Um, usually on that Thursday, which would be 14th, would be our Holy Thursday service, where we'd gather and have a potluck and have a, have a worship service to remember that night when Jesus gathered for the Last Supper and uh, went to the garden and prayed. And I'm thinking of offering some kind of service that evening. It won't be a potluck. It'll be in this space. And it'll be a very simple service where we hear the story and sing some songs. And <clears throat> I'm wondering if people are interested. So if there is interest, even if I get like, you know, four or five people saying, yes, I would be there, then I will put something together and we'll offer something that evening. So just, just let me know if this would be something that would be of value to you. And then the next morning, Good Friday, uh, will be held at Trinity United Church. That's one of our churches in Oakville. And I think it's Trinity, St. John's, and St. Paul's that are doing the service together, and the minister from Munns United as well. So you are welcome to join us at Trinity United Church that morning. It will be live streamed as well. So whatever is most comfortable, comfortable, comfortable for you, I invite you to either join us or watch us live and be a part of, again, that remembering that we do on Good Friday morning. And then, of course, Sunday is Easter. And this Sunday, Easter happens to be the Sunday closest to Earth Day, which is um, April 22nd. So we will be celebrating those things together, which I think is only natural to celebrate new life on Easter and for Earth Day. This is also a time when I, take, when I share how grateful we are for all that the community of St. Paul's does here, for the time they give, for the gifts they share, and for the financial offerings they give. So I would like to offer a prayer to say thanks. Loving God, may our gifts be a catalyst for truth about how we are blessed and how we are broken and how we are given to your world for hope and for healing. Amen. And I will now invite Bev up to bring us deeper into prayer. Good morning. Good morning. My, my name is Bev Phillips, and I'm a member of the family of St. Paul's. This morning, I'll be leading you in the prayers of the people. As the March winds whistle through the trees, and we look longingly to the coming of spring, let us still our minds and listen for God. Let us pray. Compassionate God, we come to you with concern in our hearts. The world is changing, and we feel as though we have so little control over what is happening around us. We are overwhelmed by the challenging news coming from so many parts of the world. Be with all those whose countries are engulfed in struggle and conflict. Bring strength to the young women of Afghanistan, who despite previous promises, have once again been denied access to education. Give courage to the people of Ukraine and all those who are in danger and help them to know your comforting spirit. Grant wisdom to the leaders who are trying to resolve these conflicts. Inspire them to consider the needs of all people on every side and to work once again towards a peaceful resolution where all may be respected and live safely. Gracious God, in a world of division and conflict, 
Inspire us to move forward as your people. Give us the strength to be brave and spread a message of positivity and hope. Help us to have the grace to listen to those with whom we disagree and show understanding of conflicting views. Open our hearts and help us to know how we can be of assistance to others, whether in our neighborhood, our country, or the greater world. Loving God, we are grateful for all you have given to us. We are thankful for our families, our friends, our church, and all those who surround us with love and support. Help us to appreciate the peaceful community in which we live, where we are safe and free to express our opinions. We are blessed to live in an area surrounded by beautiful lakes, rivers, and trees. Help us to respect and appreciate the natural world and the environment around us. Inspire us to actively participate in its care and to take measures that it may be protected for generations to come. Ever-present God, we are thankful for all the gifts you have given us. In a time of much transition and upheaval, help us to remember that no matter what happens, you are always there to love and guide us. Let us now pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, I just want to acknowledge that uh, well, Jeff and I just came back from Michigan yesterday, so we were amazed at how their mask mandate has not been in place for a long time. So we were amazed at the, at the comfort level of people congregating and speaking and talking with no mask. Um, we felt much more comfortable when we crossed that border and we actually had to put on a mask to go into the store. But we are very aware, though, that this week the, the mask mandate lifted in Ontario as well. And we all have varying levels of comfort with that. So as for coming to church, uh, the reopening committee will be talking again in a week to talk a bit about what it looks like in church when we come to worship. Um, but we are very aware that m many people feel safer with their masks on. This is a place where we come together, talk to one another, pretty we stand pretty close to, to each other, and a place where we sing. So it feels safe to have that mask on. Um, but I'm also aware that there are people out in the world who have, you know, I, once that mask mandate lifted, they took that mask off and were very happy to do so. So we also don't want to turn those people away who don't come to church with a mask. So we're going to have to really think about how this looks going forward, um, how we embrace people however they come to worship. So just, just some food for thought, um, and hopefully I can share some more when our reopening team meets in a week. Maybe by then we'll know a bit more about more people's comfort level. I know that's an, it's a hard thing to talk about. Uh, after worship, I will be opening the Zoom room for those who are at home for a coffee hour. I invite you folks to, to, stand, to stay and talk, and uh, of course, get your fruit to Catherine if you have it. As we go from this time of worship, may we be like a rejoicing parent with a found child. May we dish out a banquet of welcome and forgiveness. Let us hope and pray that we share in this banquet with all of those in God's kingdom, creating heaven on earth. Amen. Amen.